listening to episode 17 of the Couples Cast. I'm Johnny. I'm Melanie, and today is August 28th, 2015. Hi, Annie. How are you doing? I'm doing just dandy. Yeah, we got Long day. <laughs> I've been working like crazy all week, and it's not done yet until tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, so we're recording this kind of <clears throat> later on a Friday. Normally, we would do this during the afternoon, but since Melanie's working now... My um, first week at a new pl- at a place that I've been... Yeah, just, just going nuts. So <laughs> be surprised that the the podcast will go up late Friday night or probably uh, early, early Saturday, Saturday morning. Which, or, or of course, if you're listening to this <laughs> like oh on Saturday, have a nice August twenty ninth, two thousand and fifteen. <laughs> All right. So <laughs> as we always do, this is the podcast where we talk about geeky stuff, the things we like, the things that uh, are making a big <laughs> splash. <laughs> yeah, stuff we want to bitch about, uh, and all that good stuff. Um, I was actually going to try and open up the podcast a little differently. Honey, <laughs> where I was going to be like... Uh, I almost just spat out my ginger ale right at the monitors. I didn't really want to... I was trying to hold it in from la- trying to oh, I, can, I, I can still do it. Uh, I can still do it. Just, I was going to I was gonna imitate, yeah. um, if everyone remembers, anything, so. the gentle Ben... Or not gentle Ben, but the gentle. The, uh, the, the Homer Sim- <laughs> the, the Simpson... The Simpson episode where Homer was uh, accused of sexual harassment because he took a g- gummy Venus de Milo off a girl's butt. <laughs> and like he comes flipping right. through the TV and there's like all... Everything's talking about him because that's like, a hot topic, right? So I was going to be like, uh, welcome to the Couples Podcast. Today we talk about geeky things, video games, and the women brought home by their hatred of Homer Simpson. And now your host, Gentle Ben. <laughs> and I was going to make like weird like bear noises. <clears throat> Can I just say something? Let's have less Homer Simpsons and more money for public schools. <laughs> ben, I have a question. <laughs> that goes over the craft services. One of the best jokes, other than, of course, <laughs> him falling out of the shower, putting the curtain over him, and then, like, Simpson News update. Homer sleeps in oxygen tent, which we believe gives him sexual powers. <laughs> it's so oh, funny, God. before we go into what we've been playing and in our topics, it's so funny watching earlier mm-hmm. shows like that try to talk about sex, and it's so, it was so taboo back in the day, because, like, in that episode too, they made it like a big deal that when they said sex, they like emphasized it. It's like tonight on Rock Bottom, we go to a sex farm for sex hookers. Like he like puts emphasis on sex. It's funny. It's like I can kill you. I sell. I just grow corn. Mm-hmm. And we're the hookers. Ram back. Whoops. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Oh, so, good God. So Melanie. What have you been playing this week? Uh, Dragon Age 2. Uh, Origins. <laughs> At least catching up with everything. I decided to do one of the DLCs before I went right to Redcliffe and uh, attempted to uh, save the kid in there. Yeah, that's that's a, that's the funny thing with me. Like when I play games, uh, if there's any like new missions uh, DLCs, I'll usually play them after the fact, um, uh. especially like games like Mass Effect. Um, yeah. Well, there's one that has to if be... If it's in the storyline wise, Well, there, 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 yeah. in Mass Effect 2, there was the one where you had to, you know, uh, <clears throat> redirect a, a comet or a planet into the way of uh, a mass right. relay to yeah. stop the Reapers remember, from showing yeah, up early. Yeah, we know that. Now, that one has a big impact on the next game. <laughs> yeah. So, I, I, I find that, like, I only do the story stuff. Like, 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 when the story DLCs and all that finish for Arkham Knight... Yeah. That's when I'll get them, and that's when I'll start playing through them. Because there's the Batgirl Robin one. Yeah. Uh, that's a prequel. Because, like, Joker looks a little bit more traditional, especially Harley. Looks a little bit more traditional Old in that. Old school. It's like a homage yeah. to everything we grew up with. Yeah. A little bit way before the killing joke, obviously. Uh, yeah, quite a bit before the killing joke. <laughs> yeah. Even though they do pay tribute of, of it in the, uh, in the uh, game itself. Yeah. Yeah. I think Which it was, like was a nice little treat to see. Second time you go to the clock tower. Yeah. Yeah, because after yeah, because you go the first time you get something, and then you head to Ace's Chemicals, and that's when you start seeing, uh, well, it's Joker's it, it's, it's origin. Been, yeah, well, not Joker's origin. It's well, the it's, last Red Hood. No, no, no. It's Wait. it's 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 the start of you got the the fear toxin in you, and it yeah. messes with the, the Titan formula that's still in you and Joker's blood. So yeah. this is the thing. It's like. 
Sorry for spoiling it, but it's been a month now. You should know by it's now that Mark... It's a couple of months. It's, it, you should know by now that Mark Hamill's in the game and he is Joker. But it's that he's just in the mind of Batman. Yeah. Yeah, so... So, that's not what I've been playing. I've actually been uh, live casting on my uh, Twitch and Hitbox stream. I've uh, been playing Conker's Bad Fur Day on uh, the Rare Replay on Xbox One. Yeah. Holy crap, does that game not hold up... <laughs> I completely forgot, like, at first you're just like, oh, funny platformer, you know, British humor, you know, crude jokes, swearing, mm, and yeah. you're just like, oh, this is a Nintendo game, like, this is, you know, uh, th this is very taboo. And I just realized, too, when you boot up the game, obviously they had to take it out, because um, it just goes to mature audiences only and Conker's Bad Fur, Fur Day. But if you have the console version, Conker comes in with a chainsaw and cuts the Nintendo 64 logo in half. And he's just like, stupid logo. And then out comes the Rare logo, and he posts by that, and he's like, marvelous. So, I know that's gone, but... God, if you guys watched the live stream <laughs> of me, you know how bad I raged at uh, the last few levels. Like, the last two levels in the game are the Bram Stoker Dracula parody, uh, the Steven Private Ryan parody, and then the Matrix parody, which Matrix 1 wasn't as bad as I remembered it. Uh, the Saving Private Ryan one, oh my god, the latest grades. Fuck you. I hated them. But I finished that, and I got all the achievements in that. Plus there was like a secret one too. It's like if you put in a cheat code in the menus that give you the achievement. I was like, oh, okay. Didn't know that. Um, can I an eyelash on my face? Yeah. Um, what else have I been playing? Uh... Well, on offcast, I've been... Again, going back to Rare Replay. Uh, yeah. I finished up Last Core uh, the other night. Uh, completely forgot Excuse that uh, there are two fake out endings to that. So, the real ending to the game comes when you find all the six scientists. So, like, you can complete the main campaign, but until you find all the six scientists in their little yeah. uh, uh, little hatchback trailers, right? That's when the game ends because it shows the yeah. um, the truck heading for the controlled uh, uh, detonation point, which I find funny. Is the premise of the game is this nuclear truck? If it touches anything. It explodes and kills everyone in the world. But in this one little tiny area, it's it, it's fine. It's kind of like... A, that Nippon truck of Nippon. <laughs> no, no, no. It's, it's nuclear. Nuclear? It's, it's nu nuclear. <laughs> it's the same. The S is silent, stupid. Uh, so, I, I, I actually think they were watching... Because um, I think it came out at the same time. Broken Arrow. Because there was that scene in Broken Arrow where John Travolta purposely detonates one of the nukes to tell everyone that he's serious about detonating the second one, but then uh, Christian Slater puts it down into a like a bottom mo like of a copper mine or something, mm -hmm. and it stops the radiation from coming out. And then he gets on that thing. Where How he... in the heck is that actually scientifically possible? It's not. I. <laughs> I think I think they a take copper liberties. mine came. And, I, and then Red Foreman's just like, uh, oh, with all due respect, uh, uh, honestly, the best policy is not the thing. From today to the end of mankind, what happened in that area was an earthquake. That's all that happened. Nothing else happened. Bullshit. Bullshit. But then Christian Slayer comes out and like the girl's freaking out. She's like, we just set off a nuclear bomb. And he's like, it's all right. See, there's there's butterflies over there. And if now they tell you, if you see butterflies after a nuclear explosion, that you're going to be okay. It doesn't say that in the manual. And it's like, oh, we're all kidding around. Yeah, but that's what I've been playing. Oh, and of course, on mobile, I've been still into uh, Record Keeper. And I still got the alerts from Clash of Clans. It's like, so-and-so's invaded your base. And I was just like, I don't care. I don't care. I don't care. I got rid of last time you had a notification about that. Um, well, it happens every time the shields go down. Because, like, like, people in Clash of Clans are just ready to pounce. I'm ready to attack anyone that the shields are down. It's like, oh, shields are down, go ready to attack. I think it's very rare where I actually have, like, shields down for an extended amount of time and nobody does anything. Anyway. <laughs> uh, but I'm looking forward now to uh, next stream that I'm going to be doing. Uh, Twitch.tv slash JohnnyLChase and Hitbox.tv slash JohnnyChase. I'm going to be playing Final Fantasy 4 slash 2 on Super NES. Which is like the easy mode one, uh, according to... But I don't think I technically beat it without save stating, so... The only one I think i beaten was the GBA version. The Game the Game Boy? The Game Boy Advance version. Uh, so I was discussing it. Final Fantasy IV is the most remade game ever. Mm -hmm. So, it initially started on the Super Famicom Super Nintendo. 
Uh, there was a port to the PlayStation 1, uh-huh. uh, to the PSP, uh, as part of uh, the complete collection. Oh. I think there's a Vita 1. I can't remember. I think it's just PSP, though. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's, an, there's a GBA version. There's a DS version that updates it with 3D graphics. Holy crap. Uh, there's an iOS version and uh, iOS Android, so mobile. And yeah. then there's a PC version, which is just the Android version mm-hmm. uh, made for that. But still, it's been remade really, really more times than everyone's favorite Final Fantasy, Final Fantasy VII. Which, uh, I think that's one of my topics on here. Uh we can actually get into that. Unless, do you have anything else you want to talk about for uh, games playing? We'll do thing, things a, a little later. Do one, do one topic each. Okay. Um, well, it's not on here. I'll just I'll just say it real quick. Um, so, mm-hmm. they've actually come out and said that for Final Fantasy VII, that they are working on doing a new battle system. Okay. Which leads me to believe that it is not going to be turn-based um, or the active time battle system that we've come to know and love from these Final Fantasy games. Oh, no. Uh, like, okay. If this is the case, I'm not getting in the game. Like, if they're going to try and shoehorn in the Final Fantasy 13 or 15 battle system, that's not what Final Fantasy 7 is all about. It's turn-based. It is a JRPG. It's three characters well, yeah. and, then a, and a handful of monsters, and you take turns fighting when your meter gets high. Exactly. It's uh, if they're don't not to- screw with the classics. <laughs> well, apparently this is what they're going to do. They're just like, oh, Western audiences don't want this. It's like, really? Have you have you ever asked us what we want? Like, no. we want we want you to remake it, but we don't want you to like completely screw with it. Like, if you're gonna go make a new game, cool, use that battle system. But we're talking about just update the graphics and the sound because, like, when you go back and play Final Fantasy VII on PlayStation. Graphically and audioly, it does not hold up. It, yeah. it, it it's oh, falling yeah. right behind. Final Fantasy VIII still looks really good. Exactly. For the time, but this is like you know, Cloud's got those little uh, Popeye pea shooter arms. Mm-hmm. Although, if you do get the uh, the PC version of the game, mm-hmm. you can mod it to make it look really good. Uh, I've been watching Maximilian stream it, and like the on map models, uh, the mon- well, the monsters don't have a whole lot of mods to them, but like yeah. The, the mods to Cloud and, like, the, the whole party mm. is just, like, wicked, so. Uh, that's not check official, that out. Yeah, it's not an official topic here, so I'm just going to get to my yeah. first one, which um, is, if you're watch, if you're watching this either on YouTube or YouTube Gaming, gaming, gaming uh, YouTube Gaming is now live. Basically, this is uh, Google's attempt to... Uh, right, this has been in the news all week. This has been Google's attempt to try and go after Twitch and their live streaming service. Uh, which some people are saying um, it's good that um, instead of a sub button, it's a star. So, and apparently with some people that I don't know how they can donate, but people have been donating to some streams that I've been watching. Uh, I don't know if you have to hit like a certain level. Uh, I know that a whole lot of people are like just gung ho on this like Cinemassacre right now, like uh, Mike Matei and. Uh, I don't know who the other guy is, but they're just streaming like crazy now. And, yeah, like, I, at the first, when it first launched, um, people were using it like crazy, and people were getting great numbers, and I look at the, the streams, uh, the numbers afterwards, and they're like, uh, they're not really doing all that good. Now, people have asked me, too, it's like, do I plan on streaming on uh, YouTube Gaming? Absolutely not, and I'll tell you why. I'm already streaming to Twitch, and I'm already streaming to Hitbox, and I'm trying to get a community going there. There's no way in hell I'm going to try and manage a third one. Like, I love That's the fact now that... be easy. I love the fact now that Hitbox automatically... Like, if you've broadcast, you can partner. <clears throat> you can get a sub button. You can make money off of ad revenue. You can have emoticons. You can have badges for people that sub. It's no longer this whole... In, in my opinion with Twitch, the popularity contest, which is uh, if you're not popular, you got to have like 500 concurrent viewers. You got to stream at least three times a day. You got to do this. You got to do that. And then maybe they'll partner you. And then maybe they'll give you a sub button. But if you're like a popular YouTuber, they're just like, oh, Jesus, like here's the sub button. Here's the partnership. Here's all this stuff. Please, please use our platform. And from what I've also been hearing too is that uh, people that are partnered with Twitch there's something in the contract that will uh, get them in big, big trouble if they attempt to stream on uh, YouTube, which 
I don't know how ScrewAttack's getting away with it because there's dual streaming on Twitch and YouTube gaming. But they've been doing this for months. Like when they decided to go back and do ScrewAttack Live. They've been doing it for a little bit longer than that. Honey. Yeah, they've been doing it a lot longer than that. Like, I um, mean, like five. No, not five years. I mean, like two, three years. Yeah, they've been doing they've been doing this for quite a while. So maybe they've yeah. got something special with Twitch. Maybe I don't know. They got something that uh, no one else has. Maybe something unique. Yeah, we'll have to wait and see. Unique. But yeah, I've gone to the site a few times. Um, <clears throat> it is not designed for the um, low end PC user. It is very graphically heavy. Uh, it's a pain in the ass to scroll through. They have sidebars for, like, on the left-hand side, it's for, like, the most popular games. For some reason, Five Night at Freddy's is at the top. Uh, it's like, yes, we know. Markiplier plays it a lot. PewDiePie played it a few times. Like, Five, I, I, Five Night at Freddy's is just, like, clickbait. Like, I haven't... I, I, it looks I, like a cheap, like, one of those old uh, point-and-click well, it's just a, it's just a simplistic game that just you know you, you click on things to make things happen and yeah it's jump scares. I honestly I thought don't about like the jump scares. I honestly thought about buying it just for clickbait and just be like, hey, we play Five Nights at Freddy's over here too. Come watch our stuff. And I just was like, wow, I would be a really huge prostitute if I did that. So and I and I and I don't like those <laughs> oh, sca- no. I don't like those jump scare games anyway. So it doesn't matter. Neither do I. Um, it was a pain in the ass too to import all of my gaming sub channels over to that. I'm honestly I'm not impressed with it, and I it will be interesting to see how they evolve from here. Because uh, I've, I've I've had the pleasure of watching Twitch evolve from uh, an offshoot of yeah. Justin TV. Because I used to stream on Justin TV like when that when that was still around, and then I switched over to Twitch. Yeah, that's kind of what happened with us. Yeah, and. Oh man, like I can Im- I can remember that as soon as everyone switched over to Twitch, like I saw my numbers drop. Like, yeah, but that's a whole another story. Uh, Old. I'm trying to I'm trying to bring up I'm trying to bring everything back up and try to get on a consistent schedule. Um, but yeah, YouTube gaming. Let's eh. wait and see. Let's see what they do to improve, and let's see that hopefully that they. I know for a fact that they keep saying, it's like, oh, this is for the smaller channels. This is for, you know, you guys. We're going to help you guys get noticed. I have not seen any change in my numbers at all. Like, I highly doubt this is going to help the little guy. This is just to help, you know, the the regular guy on YouTube that's already making, like, hundreds of thousands of dollars yeah. and millions of views get, you, you just have, like, a centric place for people to go to find him. So. Right. All right, what would you like to talk about, Melanie? Uh, well, you got a topic on there that is interesting as well. So why don't we talk about that? The this Lara, one right here? The Lara oh. Croft. Uh, okay, let's talk the Lara Croft. The Rise news. of the Tomb Raider. Uh, collector's edition. Collector's edition. Officially got announced. Uh, apparently, you can only get it off the Squeenix site and the um, Tomb Raider site. You can't order it off of uh, any store, so you can't get oh, it off let's Amazon. Let's wait and see. Remember what happened last time. Uh, what happened last time? Remember when uh, you were asked the EB Games if they had the collector's edition of the new Tomb Raider game that was coming out, and they didn't know. All and right. it wasn't like, and I ended up pre-ordering it a month before it came out in the, in uh, game in the EB Games. Oh, okay. Remember? Yeah. Yeah, but then again, that, that's the fault of the yeah, employee. So we'll have to yeah. wait and see. So but, yeah, it like actually said, looks it actually looks pretty cool. Oh, it looks um, beautiful. Comes with a twelve inch statue of Lara in her um, Himalayan outfit. Uh, uh, not- a steel book for the for the game, which I never understood why these steel cases I for games. I don't understand why the steel case the steel what, bo- book box. Why are they called books? I don't know. Steel it's books. A case. It's a case. Like it's not a book. I was like, I open it's it up and it'd be like, case. Oh look, Laura did this in chapter five, and she did this in chapter six. It's a case. Like just call it steel case. I don't know. I don't know. Trademarks. I don't know. Um, there's gonna be a replica of the necklace that she got in the first game, uh, which you already have. <laughs> well, <laughs> you've actually made. No, then maybe it's better than the one I currently got. Who knows? Uh, and there's gonna be a replica journal, which looks. Pretty cool. And there's a few other odds and ends in there that are replicas as well, which look kind of neat. Yeah. <laughs> Some, well. Something we're probably we're, we're definitely gonna get. We're gonna get that. Yeah. Obviously. We're gonna. And they've also stressed too that uh, Rise of the Tomb Raider is timed exclusive again for 
Microsoft's consoles. They yeah. did say, though, First that dibs on Xbox. it's early 2016 when it's coming out on PC, and it's going to be holiday 2016 for PlayStation 4. So, so a whole year. Which kind of sucks, but... Well, six months would have been better, I mean... Most enthusiasts, though, most gamers have every console... There are a select few that like I know that only have... Mm-hmm. Well, we don't have a PlayStation 4. Well, yeah. Which kind of sucks, because that Until Dawn actually intrigues me. Have you heard about that game? No. Oh. Elaborate. Okay, so Until Dawn is just basically... It's an adventure... It's a, it's kind of an adventure game. Yes. But it's it's based on horror cliches. Oh, no. So, basically, it's, you know, eight friends go up to the cabin in the woods. And, you know, oh, drugs and alcohol nice. and sex and okay. all that. And then there's a slasher person that comes through and, you know, kills the kids. Or you can... So it's you can like th- a Friday the third. No, well, not really Friday the 13th. It's like Jason... Uh, or, uh, oh, the, almost. Uh, Jason or the Halloween almost. movies. Um, the story. girl from... The cheerleader from Heroes. I can't remember her full... Hayden Payton, Terry. Uh, just call She's, her the cheerleader. I hated those commercials. I always make fun of them because there was like the whisper like, Say the cheerleader. What the cheerleader? (laughs) I don't. I was gonna make. I was gonna make a really, really, really dirty joke there, but (laughs) I had to stop myself. You can tell. But no, 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 no. But no, no. (laughs) My brother and I would always make fun of that because it would always come on Global, which is Canadian station here. You would hear. You would hear. You would hear. Save the cheerleader. Save the world. We're like, what? (laughs) What? Speak up! I'm old. Where's my fruit juice? I'm not wearing any pants. When you speak up, I'm not wearing pants. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So you know, like I said, it, it's not that big a deal <laughs> bar, for Tomb Raider if you have all the consoles, because like yeah. if you really want to play it, you'll get it on your Xbox One. Yeah, I'm pretty sure they'll come up with something different for uh, for the public that is n- that you can't get on that you can get in stores or whatnot. Well, maybe they'll have it with like when the PS4 version comes out, it'll come with all the DLC that was a release for the three, for the Xbox One version. They'll just be like, "We're sorry you waited for long. Here's uh, Rise of Tomb Raider Definitive Edition yeah. for, yeah. and probably they'll re-release it again for Xbox One. Yeah, sure, in a year. Sure, sure. All right. All right um, also, uh, real quick, uh, Lara Croft Go release. That was the other mobile game that they announced at E3. Uh, I'll wait for it to go on next to nothing. <laughs> yeah, it's actually not free. Uh, not like uh, Lara Croft Temple Runner. I or haven't Run. played it yet. I've been told it's pretty good. Uh, Devil Run? Yeah. Uh, well, you played it before, honey. It's okay. You need you need a really powerful phone to play it because I I was playing it yeah, on my when I still so. had my Galaxy S two. I was playing on that and it was really rough. It was unresponsive. And then I got my S four and it was a little bit better, but still rough around the edges. It's a yeah. it's an inf- it's infi- an infinite runner. Game. Yeah, I can so, hear that. I can it's, hear you. Uh, Larkov Go kind of intrigued me a little bit because it's not uh, a free to play model. You don't have microtransactions. It's just yeah. you play through, and it looks like, um, like you know, one of those indie games where you know it's you don't have a whole lot to do, but you're exploring. So you know, yeah. you have to move or go around. So it's she interesting. almost reminds me of the Wii Fit Trainer just a little bit in looks. Yeah, because it's a top-down view and all that. But it, but when I saw a picture of like the PAX poster of it, it looks pretty. It reminds me of uh, Fez a little bit. Yeah, but, but in without a different a cr- style. But without a f- crazy French Canadian that will tell people off and oh, then cancel the game because God, he's a little s- pussy. <sighs> uh, what am I here? Phil Fish is gonna listen to this. Fuck you. Yeah, Phil exactly. French- Watching an indie game, the movie, and when he was at PAX, he's just like, I don't understand why he won't let us sign the contract. It's like, I want to fucking kill him. I'm stabbing him in the face. It's like, calm down, buddy. He's calm like, no, you come. Dude. No, I'm not calm down. I'm going to fucking kill him. I'm going to take him out to the pool and drown him. Jeez, and then, talk about anger management issues. Yeah. Oh, there you go. There you go. Okay. You heard it here. <laughs> um, okay, so I actually want to talk about this. I don't think you've seen any of the... Uh, promotional material, but uh, Gotham is starting up again in, in a couple weeks, September 24th, the premiere. Yeah, okay. Um, which uh, I believe right now it's still going head to head with Supergirl on CBS. Um, we'll watch both because. <coughs> oh, excuse me. What? Oh, <coughs> 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 uh, We don't have television. What do you want me to do? Okay. But. Fine. The, t- the trailer that they've shown off, the, the key scene, it, it, this, basically gonna, this, this season's going to be called Rise of the Villains. So, 
Uh, I'm spoiling season one for anyone who doesn't know. So, Penguin has taken over the criminal organization of Gotham because um, Carmine Falcone has left. He's like, I can't deal with this anymore. I'm leaving. Fish Mooney has died because, or, you know, presumably died because Jade Pickett Smith didn't want to do the show anymore. She was just like, oh, I'm done. Uh, she only signed in for one season. She only signed for one season. And then it got make it popular and everyone loves Fish Mooney. And she's just like, eh. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm not done. She's done. I'll let, I'll let Will do the DC stuff with Deadshot. Or uh, she'll probably just show back in uh, flashbacks or something. I don't know. Yeah, she could not. She, you know, no one found her body, so she could still be alive. Uh, to know. But from what I'm seeing, uh, it looks like Selena will be joining Penguin's crew. Uh, she still has that stupid shaved half head that she got in the last... Oh, I thought that was ridiculous. As soon as, too. As, soon as Fish Moon showed up, it's just like, okay, we're gonna completely change your character. Um, they've shown shots of Barbara, uh, with someone with a whip. I don't know who this person is, but apparently, uh, another another subtitle for this is that the inmates are running the asylum. Arkham Asylum is gonna be taking uh, a lot. It's gonna be more of the forefront because a lot of the people that Gordon put away mm-hmm. will be breaking out, including. Jerome, aka the Joker, and for all those people, for all those videos I saw of like, oh, here are the ten reasons why Jerome is not the Joker. I'm like, he's the Joker. You heard the laugh. He went psycho and killed his mom for fucking a clown. It's the Joker, and this this trailer that came out cements the fact that this is Gotham's Joker. And like a very, 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 very young Joker. He's got that little... He's got that six-shooter piece that I saw uh, when he's escaping Arkham. Mm-hmm. He organizes a shootout in the GCPD. And at the very tail end of the trailer, one of the monsters is like, hey, he's like, hey, kid, I was going to go to laugh. You should keep it. It, it suits you. It's the Joker! And it this has kid, to be! This kid is doing an awesome job portraying the Joker. He must have um, listened to Mark Hamill. <laughs> uh, Vic- Victor Zaz will be back. Which I kind of find funny is that actor is portraying two different villains in two different DC shows. He's the Mist in Flash, and he's Victor Zaz in Gotham, which oh, I love. good God. Um, the funny thing about this trailer, though, is there's not one scene of Bruce or Alfred. Because if you remember the very last scene of uh, season right, one, they found the they found, cave. Well, they the, found the cave. They it's not the Bat Cave. They found the cave. They found something. Yeah, related with to all, it. With a little help from Lucius Fox, because Lucius got introduced in the season two. So, man, I cannot wait for Gotham to start off. This like this and Flash, and we gotta catch up on Arrow. Was we only watched the first five episodes, but we're so busy with all this other stuff, we haven't had time other to catch stuff up and other little life things. Yeah. But man, Stephen Amell, like, I'll, I'll, I'll veer off quickly. Well, actually, no, because I'm saving that for last, so I won't yeah. talk about Stephen Amell at SummerSlam. Yeah. But, uh, okay, moving on. To my topics, I would yeah, suppose. Let's, uh, let's go through this right now. Let's get this done and over with. All right. This has been pissing me off. Oh, this pissed off someone else that I Oh, it's pissed off a lot of people in the geek uh, community. Uh, should I lead into the, and then I'll yes. let you say your piece? Okay. So, a lot of you have probably heard about this, but a little girl in the States has been, was sent home from school on Wednesday because she had a lunchbox with Wonder Woman on it, and the school deemed it too violent. And it's completely harmless! Yeah, there's it, there's two sides on the uh, lunchbox. One has just Wonder Woman in the like the 70s just, style uh, yeah. uh, of her artwork. Classic. And on the back... It has um, a full body shot of her with her lasso of truth, and there's nothing else on there. It's actually just like um, a it's comic as booky background. As Aphrodite, as wise as Athena. Yeah, it's it's got like the comic booky, you know, like dot dot dot, yeah. what they used to do for uh, ink prints exactly. to differentiate colors. And it's 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 completely harmless. It's, it's a metal and beautiful. It's a it's a metal lunchbox. It's like style of like you know what, what maybe our, our parents, parents had. Bring. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh man. Okay, so. You have the floor. Okay, so when I heard about this, I was pissed off. I mean, as any other parent would. I mean, why in the hell would you deem Wonder Woman violent in the first place? Well, first off, one, I am not a Wonder Woman 
fan. I only liked her in Justice League. That's pretty much it. I don't have any of the comics alone on its on my own on in my comic collection. But I'm gonna read what it says here. Uh, dear, dear parents, we've noticed that uh, link. You're, but we're not. We're gonna I'm gonna say the link, names to protect the internet. We so. noticed the, that your daughter has a Wonder Woman lunchbox that features a superhero image in keeping in with the dress code of our school. We must ask you she not bring this to school. The dress code is established it requests that children not bring violent images into the building of any fashion. So you're saying you're even including all Marvel and DC stuff. Violent. Excuse me, but no. I draw the line at this. Our kids are going to have the cool shit. We're gonna get. We're gonna give our kids school lunch boxes. Good. I don't give a shit what all the school board says. If well, all the kids have it, so will ours. Well, here's here, here's the thing with me, and I actually, when you told me about this story, um, maybe like five minutes later, um, a YouTuber by the name of Alpha Omega Sin, which you all should be uh, subscribed to, had a lot to say about this too. It's because... It's very similar to what I'm saying. <laughs> yeah, it's not that the school board had a problem with this. It's just the one teacher probably just looked at it and got, like, super offended. It's due to the fact that this goddamn world is becoming too goddamn PC and easily offended. It's just like, oh, Wonder Woman. I hate Wonder Woman. That offends me. I'm going to do something about it. It's like, no, Ugh. shut the fuck up and deal with it. It's the kid wants to like Wonder Woman. Let him like Wonder Woman. It's like this is like the, 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 the school is teaching the children... You are not allowed to like this because I don't like this. In the real world, you're not allowed to like this. He's like, you know what? We have nine to five jobs. We pay our rent. We do all this stuff. And you know what? I'm wearing... I'm not wearing a superhero shirt right now. I'm wearing a uh, WWE shirt. Edge. Radar Superstar. You know what? Because I'm a goddamn adult and I can do what I want. Exactly. And you know what? If Now, I understand school boards... And, you know, they have to draw the line. I mean, obviously, if a kid goes to school wearing a t-shirt that has a goddamn swastika on it and, you well, know, preaching hate, it... fine. Tell him to turn that shirt, shirt inside out or send him home immediately. But if you're going to send home my kid who's got maybe, like, let's say, like, I give him a t-shirt with a photo of uh, Steve Austin. And you're going to send him home because he's got a Stone Cold Steve Austin t-shirt. It says, just says Austin 316 on it. No. It's like, well, he's part of a violent thing. It's like, yeah, but is my kid going around uh, giving people the stunner in school? Well, no. Then what's the problem? Is this because you don't like it? You know what? I'm the parent. Let me dress my kid or let my kid dress the way that they want to. Exactly. Do they go At to school for you. Like to my Our kids go to your school for an education and learn about the world. They're not there to be told how to dress or how to act. That's the part. That's the job of the parent. And he said to also too. He's like, he's like, he has a son, and he bought him a Pokemon backpack. If some of his, if some teacher told him, oh, I don't like uh, Pokemon, and it uh, uh, promotes you know animal cruelty, go home and bring back a different backpack. He's like, I'm gonna have words for that teacher. But uh, the other thing I was gonna bring up that Wonder Woman actually is a person of equality as well. So yeah, she's, she's an empowering a, figure in the exactly. realm of comic books. And this is like for crying out loud, she right in one of the issues that she was in that I actually looked up. She actually married a gay, uh, a lesbian couple, and to them in the uh, and she was talking to Clark about her the, the way that things are in, in her in Thessia that they considered marriage. Marriage, no matter what. Isn't it Themyscira? Yeah, Themyscira. Yeah, Themyscira. Because okay. it's not just between what it is in our society as it is in her society. Well, yeah, I think uh, Themyscira is just all women. It's a, exactly. It's a, it's, They're it's all, women. all women. Yeah, exactly. They're all ladies. I mean, it's, it's not something that has been touched upon. Yeah, exactly. But actually... With New 52, uh, I don't know if Convergence has, like, completely eliminated the New 52 uh, continuity, and they're just, like, I, come back. Yeah. I think it was just a one-off event, but I don't know. Like, I've I, I've actually, after Archie vs. Predator, I've kind of fallen off of comics for a while. Yeah. I mean, that would be an interesting story to kind of evolve. I mean, we do have a gay Green Lantern. 
Yeah, exactly. Um, I don't remember if it's on Main Earth or Earth 2 or one. Which, what line of story, uh, story is with? There are a couple of mutants that are in the game. The uh, yeah, uh, Bobby Drake. Yeah, exactly. Iceman's gay. Iceman. Well, they, they went back in time and they were just like, yeah, I know your secret. I, knew, you're like, I think it was uh, Jean Grey said it too. It's like, I know you're gay. And he's just like, what are you talking about? <laughs> it was right before he figured it out. <laughs> yeah, so that would be an interesting story. I, that, we, we took a weird turn from like, uh, don't tell us what uh, type of lunchbox or t-shirt or book bag our kids can have to... Yeah. Well, yeah, like... Equality that's, that's between the thing too. amongst everybody. If any of our listeners out there are parents and you've dealt with this... Don't let this. Don't let the teachers in the school board bully you around by saying, "Yeah, you're a horrible parent for letting your children go this." I'm like, excuse me. Yeah, I'm an awesome parent because I let my children have a voice, and like, if they go through like the Walmart or uh, whatever and see a T-shirt that they like, and I don't find any, and I don't find anything wrong with it, wh- why would everyone else have a problem with it? Like, exactly. I don't know. People like again. People want to to be offended by just about everything. <sighs> Exactly. I, I did that once and I got flamed, so that's never happened again. Uh, flames. Well, remember my uh, my my video on hatred and how I was telling oh, people, I was like, "Oh, right, that backfired in your face." Yeah, uh, and but then again, the game kind of backfired because everyone played it and they're like, "Wow, this is a piece of shit." Why were we making a big deal about this? All right. Uh, All right. Next okay, topic. So let's go. Let's go to happier news. Yes. Okay, so this official this got leaked by a British uh, a video game company or uh, store called Game. A Shell Knight amiibo is coming. It what? Was, it, it was it was on their it was on their site for like like half a second, and then they took it down, and then they refuted it. It's just like, oh, uh, that's not. Oh, we we put that up there by mistake, and then they everyone contacted Yacht Club Games, and they're just like, is this true? Is there a Shell Knight amiibo? And they're just like. Uh, no, 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 that wasn't true. But that would be really cool, wouldn't it? After that announced, uh, after that thing leaked, um, late last night on the Grump Out, uh, channel, which is the Game Grumps, uh, uh, channel of randomness, where that, like, they just, like, if they want to have an idea for a video and doesn't fall under the main Game Grumps channel, yeah. then they'll just put it there. So, like, it was, like, Q&As, and Barry put up with the editing tutorial, and mm-hmm. there was a conversation with, yeah. uh... Danny's grandma, which is very, very cute. So this came out, and it was just like new amiibo, and it just showed Aaron like trying to shovel the the grump ca- the grumps uh, area, and it's like I can't shovel this. It's like wait a second, you need this, and chucks him the shovel knight amiibo. So this this uh, it's it looks really awesome. I don't know. I know game said that they'll pr- uh, uh, get the pre-orders in, but I don't know who else will get the pre-orders in for that because. This is something I want. I don't have... <laughs> I don't have... Now, this is technically only supposed to work with Shovel Knight, the, the actual the Wii U and 3DS game. Uh, for the Wii U, it's supposed to unlock a co-op mode, so two players can play uh, Shovel Knight on the nice. Wii U version. And 3DS, I think it's supposed to unlock... Uh, I can't remember what else it was going to unlock on the 3DS. Challenge modes. It was going to unlock challenge modes and also transfer, um, like, your armor set. So, like, you could store, like, if you had, like... Uh, I'm using the Xbox as the version. The Battletoads armor. Nice. But uh, the Xbox One is the only one that has that because Battletoads, Rare, all uh-huh. that stuff. Uh-huh. So this is awesome. This is like the first Amiibo that's going to be produced that doesn't fall in line with Smash. And a lot of people have been like saying, it's like, does this mean Shovel Knight's going to be in Smash? I'm like, that would be cool if Shovel Knight was in Smash. Yeah, that would be badass. This this has gotten me on the shovel knight. This this bit this got the shovel knight bug bitten on me. Okay? <laughs> so much show. So, uh, Melanie works at a clothing store in our local mall, and it's right next door to an EB Games. So I went in and I was just like you know fooling around and like you know looking for games and whatnot and looking for and strangely scratching my head as they condensed their amiibo section to like. Instead of, like, two-fold, it was, like, one-fold. I was like, wow, like, you guys really aren't getting any more Amiibos, are you? Uh, but, and then I went to the PlayStation 4, because someone was playing Dragon Ball Xenoverse, and I backed out, and I was like, oh, what else is on here? And I'm like, oh, Shovel Knight demo's on here. So I started playing the first first level on the music. Da, 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 I was like, man, I'm going to go home and play this right now. <laughs> so what I did is, I, I beat, um, I beat Black Knight. Okay. And I left it going. And I just waited. I'm like, I hope someone else picks this up. So I went in and talked to you for a quick second, and you were still working. So I went back in. I was like, okay, just meet me in EB Games when you're done working. So I booted up Hyrule Warriors on the Wii U demo, 
And then all of a sudden I'm standing here and, da, 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 da. and like I look behind me and there's a guy playing Shovel Knight. I'm just like, yes! <laughs> I'm like, go home, download it. Or wait till the retail release comes out because that's coming out soon. They're going to re- uh, release nice. it on retail for nice. a, a disc copy on Wii U, uh, a, a physical card on 3DS, and then there's going to be an Xbox One, PS3, Good. PS4 okay, version. Okay, cool. I think maybe a Vita version. I'm not sure. Mm-hmm. It's on a lot of platforms. It's not... Uh, funny enough, it's not on Xbox 360. I it, It's kind of sad how the 360 now has become all but abandoned. Like, it's still good for, like, deals for gold. Can you get, like, you know, two free games a month yeah. that you'll download and never play? But, yeah, like, I, as soon as I find any details about how to pre-order this thing, I'm pre-ordering it. Like, <laughs> how could I not get this thing? And, like, I actually maybe have tempted to buy Shovel Knight on Wii U just so I can unlock the co-op mode. That would be uh, a fun... That would be a fun let's play. Us doing co-op. Or That'd sorry, me, me doing co-op and you failing like super hard, eating shit on every jump. <laughs> I wonder too if it's like your two shovel knights or... Because like in the video they're just like co-op mode and it's like co-op, nope, not final. And it was just like two shovel knights. But I'm like, I wonder if it would be shovel knight and black knight. Or if it was like an alternate mode where shield knight wasn't at the end and you had her in your party. And that would help you on like super jumps. So just be like, oh man, I don't think I can make that jump when we already kill the enemy. And then you, like, the second player goes in, lifts up the shield, and you pop over it. Oh, that would be so cool. Nice. But yeah, super soaked for it. And hopefully this leads to other third parties getting amiibos. Just to do random stuff. Like, uh, like maybe get a solid snake amiibo. Uh, even though, well, Kenobi's I, I can... In the hole. Konami's never going to do that. Uh, once NGS5 drops on Tuesday, then it's just like, okay, we're done with traditional games. Even so, uh, segue into this. Uh, the, in, in the middle of September, they are going to be taking down at least 30, 31 uh, of their mobile games uh, off of uh, Marketplace because they just want... Th- and this is the ones that you pay full money for. So these aren't ones that have microtransactions. Mm-hmm. So the ones that microtransactions are staying. Obviously, because that makes them more money. Duh. Oh God! I can't. I, 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 Konami's doing so much. This is why, like, when I find a used copy at a cheap price for MGS Five, that's when I'll buy it. Just to kind of say, "Fuck that you, Konami." Doesn't surprise me. Hearing but you like, say that. if I if I know Kojima would get a cut of the money, I would buy it new. But the fact that they took his name off and they're just like, you know, and then they cancel Silent Hills, it just leads me to like, I will buy this game used. You will not get a cent of my money. I will give it to another party. Fuck you, Konami. I oh, think a lot of gamers are thinking the same way as you and I. Okay. So, uh, I'll get to talk about this. It's on your thing. Um, uh, it's so, just something I just happened to find. Uh, the first image of Michael Fassbender uh, has appeared for the Assassin's Creed movie. And what I find funny is that people have already photoshopped his face off and replaced it with eyeballs and teeth. To make fun of the Assassin's Creed Unity pa- er, bugs. Not surprising. Yeah. I am like, not surprised, but the costume is very accurate to the games by the looks of it. Yeah, pretty much. I mean, it's a little bit black. It, it, it falls in the line of, um, I think it was Revelations when Ezio had the black uh, yeah, outfit. Yeah, and I'm not entirely sure when this uh, time, uh, where it falls in the timeline, whatnot. Is it, like, it's uh, definitely it's... not Altair. No, which everyone's just like, Assassin's Creed was good, but it was flawed, and it had this. I was like, Assassin's Creed, the first one was great. I I hated the fact that like after when when two came out, it's just like well, we're focusing on Ezio, uh, on on Ezio. I was like, it's not that interesting of a character. I mean, the funny thing in two was just like, hey, don't you recognize me, Ezio? It's a me, Mario. Ha ha ha, Mario. Super Mario reference. I, yeah. Me slapping humor there. And apparently there was the Ace Solid Snake uh, thing in there too. Uh, the uh, box somewhere in uh, Italy. I and think, you can unlock a... Uh, I think there's a playable skin of Raiden in somewhere yeah, in there. And, yeah. Well, it's, it's cross-promotion because I think if yeah. you do certain sneaking stuff in Metal Gear Solid 4, you unlock uh, Altair's costume yeah. for, for uh, Old Snake. Because I remember those, like, um, it was, like, April Fool's jokes. Yeah. And then at the end of it, the, there's, like, Hideo Kojima was just like, did you write it? <laughs> I think it was, like, a play on, uh, I think Jade Raymond had a trailer for one of her games. And at the end, she's like, did you like it? <laughs> so that's why Kojima was just, just like, did you write it? 
<laughs> Apparently he's in Ground Zeroes. I need to play that game more to find him. He's like a special guy. He has like a special mission to, you know, get him. Hmm. Um, I only played through Ground Zeroes once just to get like the general gist of what 5 will set up. Yeah. Uh, I still don't know what's going on, how this fits within um, the Metal Gear canon. Because I'm looking at Big Boss uh, and he's got that red robotic hand. I'm like, he didn't have that in any other Metal Gear game. Especially it four. It looks like a gauntlet, honestly. I know he didn't lose his arm. He did lose his arm. He, he what? Okay, so let me... Let, 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 no, let me no, you no, want don't. me to break down no, Ground Zeroes for you real quick? Yeah. Well, you saw the trailer, too, that Phantom Pain one where he, he had his arm amputated, right? I don't remember right off the bat. Okay, Johnny. so there was that there was that trailer that came out with, like, a fake company, and it was just called The Phantom Pain, and no one no one knew what it was, but it looked cool. And then people yeah. pieced together that it was Metal Gear Solid Five. So okay. that, so like he, so at the end of, um, ground zero, so there's a character from peace Walker that you have, uh, that's part of your private army and they implant a couple bombs in there. They diffuse one and they didn't get the other one. And I guess somebody finds out where, uh, big boss and, uh, Miller and Ocelot's base is and attack it. And Big Boss gets caught in an explosion and loses his arm. And he's been in a coma for X amount of years. That sets up Phantom Pain. Okay. Um, and then he gets, like, a red prosthetic arm to... Uh, it looks weird. It, yeah, it does. And, and, and it just, like, that's what I was just, just thinking. I was like, where does this fall in line? And how does this not, like, explain in Metal Gear Solid 4... I'm pretty sure Big Boss has a, a regular arm when he gets to the end of the game. Uh, that hour-long ending where he well, shows up for Snake. arm transplants have... Well, yeah, yeah. That, I, I, yeah, actually, yeah, that would be true because Metal Gear Solid 1, you know, Ocelot loses his hand, then he takes Liquid's arm, and then he switches between Grumpy Old Man to Cam Clark. So he's just like, I'm going to pilot Metal yeah, Gear. Yeah, that never happened. <laughs> ah, that it's game. been a while, brother! That was brilliant. Yeah, and then they completely lost it. It was just like, I'm no longer Ocelot, or I'm no longer Snake. I am uh, Liquid Ocelot. And then I'm going to just do this voice and call you brother. And I'm like, no, Cam Clark. Uh, Cam Clark. Cam Clark, Master Miller. Leonardo. Rocksteady. A real split personality. Has yeah. different voices. I mean, come on. It was perfect in the Metal Gear Solid 2. I mean, perfect. It was perfect. And then they decided to ruin it. Perfect. Perfect. Uh, what else have I got on here? Okay, a little quick blurb. Uh, Amazon has bought the rights to produce a Galaxy Quest TV series. Oh my god. One of my god. favorite, favorite movies. Tim <laughs> Allen, Sigourney <laughs> Weaver, uh, Alan Rickman, uh... That's Such a good movie. Awesome. It's like taking the crew of the original Star Trek and telling them aliens exist, they've seen your show, and they've recreated the Enterprise, and they want you to help save them. Never give up. Never surrender. It's such a good movie. Like, if you're a fan of sci fi, you have to see it. Like, it's he, nice like, to see comedic sci fi. <laughs> the best part of the movie, I think, is when they're trying to, you know, stop the self destruct and they have to go down to the belly of the ship, and there's just this room of chompers. That serves no function except that it was on the show, so the aliens put it there. And Sigourney Weaver is just calling this out. It's like, I don't get this. Why is this here? Because it was on the show. Well, I don't care. This is a poorly written episode. <laughs> <laughs> and then they get it's to the almost end. Almost like you're doing the third wall, uh, fourth walls all the way. <laughs> and then a, like a fire shoots out, and she's like, "Whoever wrote this episode should die." <laughs> Oh god! <laughs> so I'm looking forward to that because Galaxy Class is like literally one of my favorite oh, movies. Oh yeah, it's, it's a classic. So so underappreciated, but it's gorgeous. And it's it's one of Tim Allen's best movies. Oh, that, like y you best look at it, comedic movie. You look at it, and it's just like it's it. You, you look at him, it's like okay, this isn't uh, Tim the Toolman Taylor I'm watching. This is a guy who actually thinks he's he, he's this character. He goes to conventions and he's just like, oh yeah, I can do. He this. He lives a life. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, before we move on to another one of your topics, I'm just going to... Uh, I yeah, think I might call this a, I might I might make this a regular segment. This is like the uh, WWE 2K16 uh, update, whatever. So a lot more information came out about WWE 2K16 about its mechanics and how they need to work on it. Yeah. So uh, the initial grapple system that they had beginning, where you uh, play rock paper scissors and mm-hmm. you know using analog sticks to yes. go into the moves and all yes. that, is still going to be there. But now they've completely reworked the reversal system. You now have stocks that will go down every time you reverse a move. So, Wait, uh, they say that depending, depending on the type of wrestler you pick. So, if you pick one who's less technically sound, let's say. I can't think of one off the top of my head. Uh, let's okay. say Zack Ryder. You pick Zack Ryder. Zack Ryder's got maybe, we'll have maybe three, four tops mm-hmm. of stocks. And let's th- say you pick someone who's a little bit more technically sound. Let's say... Um, Triple H. So you pick Triple H. He's got like five, maybe six tops. Uh, so what happens is every time you use a reversal, so like someone hits you with a move and you reverse it, you lose a stock. And then gradually over time, that stock will refill. So it's going to eliminate this constant reversal game that people have been playing for years. Especially, oh, okay. Now I see. Especially online where it's just... You sit there and you pull the you pull the so it's the like counter a reversal move. meter. Yes, you. It's it's like online. Like and that's my biggest complaint with online is that everyone just reverses. You just sit there pulling the right trigger until someone is like less chicken to pull a move, and the delay is so bad that you're just constantly reversing moves. So, oh my they also God. said that uh, this is going to uh, also there's going to be two different types of reversals. Mm-hmm. There's going to be uh, the initial reversal. So let's say. I go in for the grapple, and then I start the animation to give you a suplex. Yeah, you could can't you could you could do um, a reversal there and just you know kind of block out of it. Or so two different reversals. Yeah, or you could do it mid animation. So let's say I get you in that suplex, and I've got you up and I've got you stood vertically. You'll yeah. have a little bit less than a fraction to pull off it, but you can do what's called a major reversal. And let's say I'm um, just using examples. It's not in the game. I haven't seen it, but you're you're up in your vertical and then you get that little window and you execute it so like you could do something like i don't know like float back over you know lock the wrist uh, and go into a german suplex or hit the guy with the neck breaker maybe man. that's really cool and it also uh so it also sets up a bigger strategy it's like do i save my reversals and just take the damage and hope he goes to the finisher because uh-huh. This also pulls in a strategy. You could save your finisher and wait for your opponent to use up all of his reversals so oh! that there is no possible way he could reverse. So, like... That's awesome! I could get a guy to do, like, reversals until the sun comes down. And then when I get the upper hand and then I get my finisher, he's got nothing to reverse. I'll back up to the corner. I'll hit a spear on him or something. Mm-hmm. Uh, and something that uh, I think is actually uh, kind of fun. Oh, also, they said, too, that... Um, there's going to be a submission. They've actually gone back and they're no longer doing it button mashing. Because before, in the last couple of games, a breaking point meter would show up, which is a pay-per-view that no longer exists. And mm-hmm. you just have to mash it. And depending on how damaged the guy is, it's like less likely he'll tap out. But now... <coughs> the- Bless you. <coughs> Bless oh my God, you. excuse me. Thank you very much. <laughs> okay, so after Sneeze Fest 2015 is over... Um, Ow! <laughs> Ow! Getting violent here. Um, Speaking of violence. Yeah, so the submission move. It's actually going back to past games where you actually had to use the uh, analog sticks to lock in the submission and apply it and apply pressure. Or for someone who is a smis- uh, submission specialist, they could hit a certain area and uh, <laughs> and get out of the uh, submission. But now from the screenshots we see, they've actually adopted the uh, UFC uh, meters. When you do a submission in the U- new UFC games, yeah. there's this grid that shows up, and you use the right analog stick to apply pressure. And if the other opponent ah. doesn't do it the right way, then you'll lock in the submission tighter and then force a tap out. So this this could work out really good. Yeah. And also, I put in big capital letters, rest holds. Rest this holds? game is going to have rest holds. Okay, what? so... Uh, elaborate, please. So, breaking cave a little bit. To tell you what a rest hold, oh. to, 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 to tell you what a rest hold is, 
This is a move. Basically, it's, it's just a standard headlock, and you just hold it. So, oh. uh, Suave did this, I want to say eight years ago. <laughs> and this is when Daniel Bryan was still Bryan Danielson and doing this in Ring of Honor. Like, he was sick. Like, uh, Daniel Bryan had the character back then where he hated, like, people doing, like, you know, killing themselves in matches and, you know, doing flippy, flippy shit. You know, it's like, I'll, I'll do a Swanton X power bomb off the top rope and you'll kick at it too. And he's just like, no. So he would just put guys in, in headlocks and just rinse it and rinse it. And Suave did this once and he's just like, oh, guys, sit back. Nothing but rest holds for 25 fucking minutes. You're going to love it. <laughs> so apparently what this does, when you, when you use a rest hold in the game, this is going to help you gain your stamina back and also take away your opponent's stamina because he can't do anything. He's laying on the gun. You've got this you've got this headlock. Like I can't wait to start doing this with Randy Orton and just like oh, watch the drool God. watch the drool come down his face. He's just like thinks about headlocks. <laughs> so I I I I said it was like I I don't like 2K16 wasn't looking all that appealing to me and you know, it's like, oh, you pre-order, get the Terminator, whoopee, and Stone Cold's on the cover, whoopee. But now that I've seen more and more of it, like, they are actually going, I think they're actually going to hit the, what I said a few weeks ago, the 120 unique wrestlers. Because they are bringing so many NXT guys in here. They've got the VOD villains. Like, the VOD villains are going to be in the game. That's fucking wicked. And I watched Finn Balor's entrance in the game. Also wicked. Like... <laughs> I don't know, I don't, and hopefully they get the full list there, but I would love to see, um, like, I know they're on the main roster now, so I'd love to see uh, Charlotte, uh, Sasha Banks, Becky Lynch, Bailey, uh, Alexa Bliss as well. I actually I think Alexa Bliss has been confirmed for the game, so yeah. at least we're getting an NXT Eva in there. So, rolling in from the game, I just want to talk uh, real quickly about uh, the WWE Weekend in Brooklyn uh, at the Barclays Center where they had three shows. They had, on Saturday, NXT TakeOver Brooklyn, yep. which they actually, um, I answered my own question from the review, and I said, because I did a review on this, if you guys want to check it out on the channel, but I asked the question, I said, why was Charlotte and Becky Lynch wearing the wrestling gear? And apparently, uh, they taped a 90-minute episode of uh, NXT, uh, regular NXT, that was going to air, that actually aired a couple nights ago, so that was the reason they were in gear, because it kind of draws, it's like, why are they in gear? They're not on the show. Huh. Okay, so... There's your answer. Yeah, but, uh, yeah, like, man, what a great weekend uh, if you're a WWE fan. You had that show, and then you had SummerSlam that had a lot of good twists and turns, in my opinion. And then you had a pretty good Raw, which saw the return of the Dudley Boys, the return of Sting, <laughs> and John Cena flattened John Stewart with an AA. What's not the love? <laughs> but I want to address... The differences between the booking of NXT and the booking of the WWE Divas. Because if you watch the NXT show, and they pumped up Bailey versus Sasha Banks, because they actually had a story behind it. It was because all three women that are now up in the main roster, I'm talking about Becky Lynch, Charlotte, and Sasha Banks. About time. They, they are all brought up, and they had you know spent their last few years just killing it in NXT. Not so much Becky Lynch because she got there a little bit late, uh, but thankfully they changed her gimmick a bunch to you know make her a little bit more relatable and not just like go out there in green tights and do the jig because you're Irish. Uh, yeah, no. they got rid of that. Thank God, gave her a steampunky type of uh, punk character. Anyways, so the, the main story about this was that they all, all of them at some point in their career had to compromise to get better, to become champion, or to even come close to becoming well, champion. Yeah. And that's why they're on, that. that's the the story is why that they're on Raw now, why Stephanie brought them up. So that kind of left Bailey behind. Because there's been un, <clears throat> this unwritten stable called the Four Horse Women. Because, obviously, because, you know, Charlotte's Ric Flair's daughter. Yeah. So Four Horse, Four Horse Women, Four Horse Women. Brilliant, so, though. Bailey has been the one that was just like, she is like ultimate baby face. Like, she's the one that will not falter. She's the one that, like, she's like, you know, the, the villains are telling her, it's like, you need to turn to the dark side to do this. You need to do this to become champion. She's, she's just like, I don't uh, know how to She sounds want. like she's the John Cena of the group. Yeah, but the crowd doesn't hate her. They love her because they're just like, we love you. You're nice. You you hug people. You're a role model to young girls. We don't want you to go down this. You know, <laughs> Cena hate just comes from, you know, like, you know, you know, guys just not liking them. 
Well, yeah, that's so, obvious, but the people love her, so that's yeah. the point. So much so, like, this was, like, the loudest reaction I've ever seen in a Divas match. I would even so far as go back to, like, the early 2000s with Trish and Lita and their matches. Like, like they, they had a main event on Raw, actually twice. Lita and Stephanie... And Trish and Lita were like the main events of yeah. uh, Raw, like the first time, like you know, I women. I think I've heard about this. Yeah, but like, it, there's been like this big black hole in women's wrestling for the last little while. Ugh. But thankfully, these NXT divas have been bringing it. Thank but the, here, you. But here's the problem: it's only on NXT. As soon as like the initial reaction to Charlotte, Becky Lynch, and Sasha Banks hitting the main roster was superb. The moment, though, that they paired them off in teams and they all they did was trade wins, the they they've lost it. They've lost, the, and basically, at SummerSlam it was an all right match, but there's way too there was there's way too many people there. The beauty of the NXT divas matches, women's matches, excuse me, don't I'm not I don't know why I'm just calling say them ladies. Divas. Yeah, the beauty about them is that it's one on one. It's just them. There's nobody on the outside, like. And they all have their own personalities. In WWE, it's just, you know, you're either crazy, you're a bitch, or you're a crazy bitch. That's your that's your character. That's and it just, totally not fair! Yeah, that's Kevin Dunn booking, you know, uh, buck tooth motherfucker. Get guys. the bum out! Oh, the girls just don't draw as much as the men. Oh, God, I'm going to kick that fucking buck tooth right up its face. Buck tooth, I kind of yeah. wish Jim Cornette didn't retire from wrestling so I can just hear him just bitch about Kevin Dunn some more. And it was even more so because like their cha- like uh, Sasha Banks wasn't in the the Raw match. It was like the Bellas, and like the the Brooklyn crowd was just getting into them. And then when they do the Mexican wave, that's the sign of the total sign of disrespect for a match. Uh, so like here, here uh, people have asked me too like how do you fix this? It's like easily fix this. Fire you Kevin Dunn. Well. That's never gonna happen. And until until Vince McMahon croaks, it's Triple H and Stephanie officially take over the company. Kevin Dunn's not going anywhere. As soon as Vince McMahon dies, that's the first thing Triple H will do: get rid of Kevin Dunn. He's just like, I don't need a television producer here anymore. I need a pro wrestling producer. And maybe when that uh. happens, and maybe when that happens, we'll have the cameraman stop like frantically zooming in and out on like every single bump, like. It's getting ridiculous sometimes. So, Mo asked me, "Here's here's how you fix the 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 the, uh, the raw divas right now. You don't pair them up with any of the established stars anymore. Like Paige has gone far out of her way now from NXT. She's now like full force WWE. I, I hopefully this is going to die down soon, but like have the teams break off. It's too soon to bring up Bailey. I understand that she just won the belt, but then again, Paige won the belt, and she was still she she won the Divas belt, and she had both belts for a while. So you can bring them up. Any, I mean, Kevin Owens has been double dutying on NXT and Raw as NXT champion for for a good month or a half or two months or so, and still yeah. has like amazing feuds on both shows. So that's not a problem. But the problem is, he is does that it well. The problem is, is that. I know you're spiteful. I know you you just want Nikki to break the title record without having defended it in the last three months just because you're spiteful at CM Punk for quitting on you and saying, like, I don't need this job. I don't need this money. I'm leaving. And then later the doctor's suing and AJ's like, wait, I don't need this job. I don't need this money. My man's going to get UFC money. I'm out, of, I'm out of here too. And then you're so spiteful that you want to break that record. Like, that's the main problem I have with WWE. It's just like, if you're not WWE for life, they want nothing to do with you. So, like, another case in point, too, is, like, the Dudleys came back. They have not been in the WWE for over a decade. For the last 10 years, they've been in TNA. Had, they had some pretty good feuds. They had some shitty ones. Go look up uh, uh, Homicide Hernandez versus Team 3D Electrified Steel Cage match. Oh, dear. Where the electrifying effect was the lights flickered, and they played a stock sound effect of... Bzz, bzz, bzz. And then the crowd's going, Jeez. Fire Russo! Fire Russo! Thankfully, they did. So, back to my thing. Like, the way you fix it is that you get some of those other talentless divas off there. Like, Alicia Fox, I have no idea why she's still employed. She, why is she still there? 
Cool. She's the first African American woman to become Divas Champion. Good on her. But she wasn't a good actress. No, she was not an actress. I must uh, be mistaken her for two other people. Uh, Tamina, you gotta get rid of as well. I mean, yes, yeah, she is uh, the adopted daughter of uh, Superfly Jimmy Snuka, but she's she accent She does prone. not do anything. Na- Naomi's a horrible heel. Uh, oh, good God. The Bellas... This is the one-year anniversary of the downfall of the Bellas. I just realized that. Because this is when Nikki turned heel on Brie. Wish she oh, died in the womb. right there. And then the, it's like, you have to be my slave for 30 days. Oh, 30 days are up. Oh, I like you again. Wait, didn't you wish death upon... Fuck this company. I know. That's the most fucked up. I, it, it's come to a point now where they've ruined these three divas. I don't want anyone else from NXT to get called up because they're just going to ruin them. Like, VOD villains. This is the perfect type of gimmick that Vince loves. It's like, oh, I love it. They, they think they're from the 20s. He's got that handlebar mustache and, you know, they're all pasty white and they wear, you know, wrestling trunks like they're wrestling bears. Bears. Back in the day, <laughs> that's great. I love it. I'm like, no, 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 keep them on NXT. I don't want like, like look at the Lucha Dragons, like ruin the loot. Ah. Anyways, I went off way longer than I should have on that. Don't but, worry about it, Johnny. Okay, um, you know, I we've got a little over, but we got time for one everything more. Everything that you wanted to talk about. Uh, yeah. Uh, do you have anything else on uh, the docket? Bes- uh, well, besides that Star Wars thing that, uh, I thought was pretty brilliant of, uh... Oh, yeah, uh, Star Wars preaches some truth to Facebook, uh, about female armor. Apparently someone posted on the official Star Wars Facebook page, says, not to be sexist, I'm like, stop you right now. Whenever you say, I don't mean to be offensive, I don't mean to be sexist, I don't mean to be racist, but, I'm like, stop you right there. You saying, I don't mean to be racist, I don't mean to be sexist, but... Doesn't you. stop you from actually being that. It's just like, yeah. I don't mean to be sexist, but you don't look so hot in that. Well, <laughs> it's like, hey, it's like, hey, I said I don't mean to be sexist. Yeah, so that should be, and that is but, uh, still anyway, offensive. Anyway, anyway um, on the post, I said, uh, not to be sexist, but it's really hard to tell that fem- that's female armor for me. And they replied, it's armor on a woman. It doesn't have to look feminine. Exactly. It has to be protective, you dumb shit. Yeah, exactly. Like, how many times have you looked at video games and you've looked at women in armor and it's just like, oh, this is obviously made for women because, like, you know, there's the breastplate, like, actual breastplate. I mean, yes, you can go back to the Mass Effect game and the and the N7 armor for Femme Shep looks way or different than the... back in the... Or, or uh, Roman armor. <laughs> yeah. But I think they're, I think it's pretty cool how they're doing this stance on like, this is armor. It's gender neutral. Anyone can wear it. The key thing about armor is to protect yourself, not to let your enemy know that you're male or female. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's supposed to make give you the mystery of who you're uh, fighting. Yeah. For example, remember in Lord of the Rings, right in the last uh, movie that uh, let's see here, uh, what was the. Arwen, Arwen, or the one of the. It starts with an A and ends with a Rin. <sighs> yeah. Well, and anyways, she, she stabs the the witch king. The, in the lady face. that uh, Fiona Aragorn hooks up with. Yeah. She picks up one of the uh, guys and she actually kills the lich king. <laughs> oh no, witch king, not lich. There's a witch. I don't know the guy in the mask. The, 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 he the, said, the, "No the, man can kill me," and she takes off the helmet and like, "I am no man," and shink. And then in the extended cut, she uh, falls ill. Doesn't last long. Actually, it lasts quite a bit. She didn't show up until the wedding, I think. That's true. I don't know. It's been a long time since they've seen the extended Honey, cut. Actually, the one we've seen from start to finish, like the extended, was the probably the first one. Uh, we hadn't seen the second one. Yeah. In the, we hadn't seen the two towers and oh, after that. We yeah. didn't see those two. We're really bad at finishing series. Like, like on Star Wars Day, we'll watch, like, you know, A New Hope and then, like, nothing else. Honestly, like, I don't think I've cracked... Besides the bonus disc with, like, the like the, the behind-the-scenes stuff and, like, you know, the fan-made yeah, videos and yeah. the tributes and all that. I've watched them. I don't think... I, I've seen episode one and then all the re-edits that George Lucas did to that. It's just like, oh, get okay, rid of that puppet. Make uh, Yoda CG like the rest. That's yeah, continuity. Like, oh, fuck off. Fuck and then off. and then and then watching a new hope and watching all those extra boulders, and then watching Return of the Jedi and hearing Vader go no no I'm like mm. Disney, 
please tell us that when episode seven comes out, it's just like, oh, by the way, if you can't get into the theater, how about you buy this brand new Blu-ray box set of the original trilogy unaltered? And then we'll be like, no, just shut up and take my money. Because <laughs> I think I actually have three different downloads. I, I, I did this once. I, did, I have three different downloads of like, quote unquote, definitive editions of the original trilogy, which I think are like high res um, captures of the laser disc or maybe the VCDs. VHS? No, not VHS. Although I have like, don't I have the original trilogy on VHS like yes. five different times? Uh, I have like the CBS Fox version, the CBS Fox version on widescreen, the THX version. <laughs> uh, we have almost I think everything. I have the special edition. You can almost hook up the VCR right up to the can into the the computer and fix it up yourself. Yeah, I probably could. <laughs> <laughs> Although uh, VCR heads are a little bit problematic. Well, um, till yeah, they can find something to fix that. Yep. Yeah, I'm glad they kind of put that guy in his place. Well, he, he wasn't really being too offensive. It was just like, no, uh, oh, it doesn't right. look feminine. It's like, you know, armor's not supposed to look feminine. It's supposed to, you know, protect well, you from yeah. you know, getting your ass killed. True enough. Yeah. So, okay, <laughs> I think we're going to end it there. Yeah, uh, that's I think it. we're good. Yeah, that's it for this uh, edition of the Couples Cast. No questions again this week. And maybe we should say it at the beginning of the podcast so people will know. Because maybe not a whole lot of people listen to, like, the whole podcast. And they're just like... Not what? very questions. many. Questions? I didn't know you uh, did that. Uh, yeah, so if you have any questions or comments, please leave them down in the description below, and we will answer them next week. Um, but uh, tell us, this has been episode 17 of the Couples Cast. I'm Johnny. I'm Melanie. This is the Couples Cast. Again, I don't know why I'm saying that again. I'm horrible <laughs> at ending stuff. I'm just going to end it now. We need you guys to figure a... out a new gimmick to end these things. We'll so if you like, comment, and subscribe, please think of something genius we can put in for each and every single... Uh... Yeah, because like... Yeah. I just realized that the OSW guys have like their own ending. It's just like... It's like, oh, this is the end. This, oh, if you, you watch every one of our episodes, fuck! Free of charge and 4x3. Goes down. <laughs> and remember, you, a winner is you. You almost sound like the Iron Sheik. <laughs> fuck the hell they want. Fucking bullshit. <laughs> fuck you, don't cut the matter, huh? <laughs> Fucking bullshit! <laughs> Alright, <laughs> You guys have a good week. We'll see you next week. See you next week, guys. Mm -hmm.